Yo Lex here, and this is a guide on Hydro Wizard for solo pushing. In this video I'll be doing a Greater Rift 134, a non-seasonal character is used to avoid being carried by Season 21's theme. The run starts off with Disentombed Hawks on the Festering Woods map. These Hawks aren't a good enemy for most builds due to their high HP and low density, but they can be dragged for a while. This version of the build has an added Reverse Archon twist, it's an optional setup that can be added to many builds. The Swami and Fazula's Chain is added to gain 300% more damage for 20 seconds after exiting Archon form. No damage is done during the Archon phase, and the 20 second duration is used to drag and group enemies. I believe the Reverse Archon variant is better for pushing, but requires you to be good at setting up for groups. Squirt's damage buff is kept up through shielding from Magic Weapon Deflection and Galvanizing Ward. These shields last longer with damage reduction from items like Halo of Karini and Ancient Parthion Defenders. The Magistrate gives Hydras a Frost Nova to freeze enemies. Freezing more enemies around you will increase the damage reduction you get from the Bracers. Two Hydras need to be manually casted for them to benefit from area damage. Teleport into the group after they have been frozen. Then hold down Arcane Torrent to give them more damage from channeling items. Channeling before Hydras are casted will generate an automatic Hydra from Etch Sigil that will not benefit from area damage. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac cools down Archon while channeling. Be careful not to spam too many teleports, since Zodiac only cools down one random skill per proc. You can start moving once your Archon is ready, or wait until the Archon stack runs out. When it's time to drag, Hydras are cast away from the group of enemies to stop them from freezing. Hydras are cast on top of Elites to do the most damage to them. Knockbacks and other CCs that interrupt your channeling will stop your damage. Ice Climbers are used to at least prevent freezing. A well-timed conduit at the end of the map finishes off two Elites. I get lucky with back-to-back -back festering woods with another good mob type, Transformers. The speed pylon won't increase my damage right now, but can be saved for the boss. Hydras count as pets, so Enforcer Gem and Tasker Gloves are used. Enough attack speed is stacked to reach a 24 frame breakpoint for Hydras. The faster spit rate stacks more burning ground and increases total damage. Check the D3 planner link for all the details and build variants. This Legacy of Dreams variant is better than the Typhoon set for pushing. Typhoon has more set damage, but Mammoth Hydra Rune isn't multi-headed, making it unusable. Mammoth Hydra is far superior to other runes because each spit lasts for 16 seconds, and the burning ground stacks. I think the other runes should be buffed to make Typhoon viable. Also restores some of the damage on Serpent Sparker and Magistrate to buff both builds. LOD Hydra needs at least two times more damage to be balanced with other classes. Sextress is spawned with about four minutes remaining. I run to take the speed pylon for faster Bane of the Stricken stacking. Stricken is stacked quicker with punches while in Archon form. Be sure to move 15 yards away to refresh the Karini buff so you don't die. Bosses that don't move and stay in the burning ground are preferred.
The shield pylon is taken for the final moments. The boss is almost dead, but my damage is reduced without the Archon stacks. I play it safe and use another Archon. Please like the video if this helped or you enjoyed the run. Subscribe for more content. And feel free to stop by the live stream if you have any questions or comments. I'll be pushing with other builds until the PTR releases soon. Hopefully Wizard gets some much needed buffs next patch. Happy slaying.